welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to make this zoom effect as seen in this Sam Calder video, as well as some other videos out there on YouTube. Uh, this is going to be both a Final Cut and an Apple Motion tutorial, as well as a downloadable plugin completely for free down in the description. So if you want the resources, you want the plugin, you can just go grab those right now in the description. I'm also including chapter markers, so if you want to skip specifically to the Final Cut section or to the Apple Motion section of the tutorial, you can do that uh, easily right down below. All right, so let's step through this effect and see what's happening. It's got this awesome dynamic feel where it's zipping backwards through these clips of people and faces. And the thing that I didn't notice until I stepped through this frame by frame was that all of these are photos, not videos. And it's really apparent, especially in this clip with the two people facing each other, that it's not a video. If it was a video, there would not be quite as much movement side to side as the faces spread apart. And you can even see in the face on the right, it looks like a smoothed out masked version, a cutout version of the person's face. Because these are still images, uh, this is not a tutorial on how to use Photoshop. You need to be able to cut out your own images. If you need those Photoshop files to follow along, I've included those right below the like button, so please go download those and drop them into Final Cut. Now once you have these two Photoshop files imported into Final Cut, you can just grab them and drag them directly onto your timeline. If we double click on this, you can see we have the pieces of the Photoshop file, the different layers. The middle one is disabled. It's the total comp um, that I've just hidden. We don't need it. What we're going to do is we're just gonna select this background layer and this upper foreground layer, which is poorly named. And we're gonna hit Command C to copy. We're gonna hit this back arrow to jump back to our main timeline. We're gonna delete that off of our timeline and press Command V. So now we have the separated layers sitting here in our timeline. Now the next thing we're going to do to make it a little easier to see the effect uh, is we're gonna zoom out just a little bit. We're gonna grab this top layer here and we're gonna start scaling it. Now you can see he's just a little out of frame, so we're just gonna scale and reposition. And then you can also see that the background is a little bit too small, so we're gonna scale that up as well. And you can see some of the artifacts where I used the clone tool to cut the man out of the original photo, which is fine. We're just gonna slide it down a little bit so you can't see those artifacts from the clone stamp. Okay, now we've got something that's framed up. It looks pretty nice overall. Now in order to get this parallax effect in this zoom, we need both of these clips to zoom out at slightly different rates from each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump ahead just a few frames, we're gonna trim the clip down. Um, it's a little bit longer than what you see in Sam's clips and that's intentional. You'll see why in just a minute. Now let's come over here to the end of the clip and let's set a keyframe for scale and position. And then we're gonna go back to the beginning of the clip and we're going to scale up our foreground layer with our model and we're gonna position it so that his face is center frame. Once we've done that, we're going to do the same thing for our background layer. We're going to jump to the end of the clip, select our background layer, set keyframes for scale and position, and then go back to the beginning and scale up the starting size of our background clip. And the end result is something that actually looks pretty good. You can see that there is a little bit of dynamic movement between the foreground and background. It makes it feel a little bit more alive and it gives it a little bit of that parallax effect. The last thing that it's missing to really kick up the effect is just a little bit of background blur on the background clip. So if we come over here and open our effects drawer, we can go down to video effects and go to blur and go to focus blur. We're going to apply it to our background. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with position and scale. We're gonna to jump to the end and we're gonna to jump to the beginning and we're gonna set keyframes on the amount. Now the background already has a nice defocus uh, from the photo, the original photo. And so what we're gonna do is start it at zero and we're just going to slightly increase it uh, towards the end of the clip so that over time it starts out of focus as it was in the original photo and then gets more out of focus as this parallax shift occurs. It's a subtle effect, but it really kicks up the depth between the foreground and the background layer. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to 
turn these into a compound clip with Command G. And we're going to come right about here, maybe three quarters of the way through, and we're going to press Shift B. This brings up our retime editor. We're gonna turn the first half of the clip to be 20x speed, and we're just gonna play this back. And you can see that speed up makes it feel a lot closer to the Sam Calder effect. But the original effect that Sam has is a snap where it zooms out real fast and then it slows down so that you can really take in the subject. All right, now that's pretty good. It looks great, has lots of depth, and this is something that you could do on your own without too much effort and without having to buy Apple Motion. Now if you have Motion and you want the better looking effect, and you even want to take it a step farther where you're introducing foreground elements, keep watching because we're going to jump over to Motion and do that now. Over here in Motion we have our new project browser. I'm going to change it to 30 frames per second because I like 30 frames, and 2 seconds is fine even though we're going to trim that down later. I'm gonna do a new motion project. You could do a generator if you want to make the same kind of plugin that I'm going to make available just down in the description below. All right, so now that we have a motion project, we're going to start by importing our Photoshop files. You want to make sure when you pick your Photoshop files that you keep the layers. You don't want them to be flattened by default. So you can see we get this dialog, make sure that you pick all layers instead of merge layers for each of the Photoshop files that you're importing. In this case, we have two. We're gonna show you how to recreate the first effect with the gentleman in the orange, because um, it's a little simpler, only has two layers, and then we're going to easily extend that to be three layers. The first thing to do now that we have these imported is just delete these extra layers that I included in the Photoshop document, same as we did over in Final Cut. So that we're left with two layers for the orange photo and three layers for the desert photo. Now we're going to mimic the Sam Calder effect right away. So we're going to jump ahead by 10 frames since that's how long approximately each of the zoom out effects is in the original clip that we are copying and we're going to press O to snap our orange pose clip down to that 10 frames. We're gonna do the same thing, jump ahead 10, 11 frames, we're gonna press O, and that will shrink our desert pose. So now we have the two clips and we're going to make them both zoom out back to back. And if you were just going to do a motion project where you had three, four, five of these, you could just rinse and repeat for each of the layered files that you're working with. Now we're going to add a camera. It's going to ask you if you'd like to switch to 3D, which we absolutely do. This is why we're doing it in motion is because we have this great 3D camera feature. We're gonna shrink the camera and the project timeline down just to fit our clips. And then what we want is the effect of the camera zooming out. So we're going to come up here to behaviors and we're going to go to parameters and logarithmic. Logarithmic starts fast and then slows down over time. So for the first zoom out, we're going to shrink it down to the duration of our orange clip as I've got it named here. And then we're going to select it, come over here to our inspector and we're going to make sure that we apply it to the Z transform on the position of the camera. So this will make it so that the camera zooms out quickly and then slows down over time. Now how we control how much it zooms out is by toying with the end value on this logarithmic behavior. Now I'm gonna start by just cranking it up a lot so you can sort of see the effect and down here you can even get a visual in our animation editor this ramp up where it starts zooming really fast and then slows down and then drops off back to the original zoom position at the end of our behavior where we cut it off. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to just try to get things positioned so they look reasonable. So we're going to grab our background and we're going to scale it up and move it down a little bit, exactly the same way we did in Final Cut. Hide a little of those clone stamp artifacts. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to grab the foreground, we're going to scale it up, and we're going to reposition it down just so that we can keep our model's face right center frame. All right, now if you just step through this, you can see that it has a pretty good effect overall, but it's a little flat. And the reason is because we haven't separated the background and the foreground layer in 3D space. So if we come up here and we switch from active camera to top, you can see it switches. I'm just using my trackpad to zoom out here a little bit. 
you can see that we have our 3D space with the yellow dot being the camera at the bottom. If I click on my clip and then hover over this arrow, I can click and drag it to reposition it. And you can see in that bottom right corner, it gives you a preview of what the final effect will be. So we can separate these a little bit more. That looks pretty good. I'm just bringing this subject a little closer to the camera. Now, if I select the camera, you can actually see this triangle that shows what the camera can see and how much it focuses. If you come up here to render and enable depth of focus, that will make it so that we can come to our camera and we can come down to the bottom and we can show our depth of field tools. And that makes it so we can blur the background as it gets farther from the camera. So we can crank up how much depth of field blur we get. And you can see because everything's sort of out of focus, you, you get even the foreground blurred. Now if we grab the near focus plane, you can see this line moves that represents where the focusing is. And we can grab the far focus and you can increase the focusing distance. And so the end result we want is we want the background to start getting really out of focus towards the end of the clip. And we want the foreground to stay in focus the entire time. So we want to make sure our foreground, which is our white line sort of in the middle there, to stay between those two yellow lines that we've set. Now if we step through this, there's a little bit more dynamism to it. There's a little bit more separation. Now in the process of positioning our camera and getting that movement, um, we can probably do with a little bit more. Um, you can see the camera actually doesn't move that far overall. So we're going to grab our log logarithmic and we're just really going to crank this so that over the course of the clip, the camera moves really far and really has a has a separating effect for those uh, clips that are stacked in 3D space. I'm just going to adjust uh, where we end so that when we get to the very end of our clip, our foreground is still just in focus and our background is just out of focus, just outside these lines here. Okay, let's switch back to the active camera and you can see it's got a pretty nice effect overall. We just need to size up our background to accommodate for the new distance from the camera that it has, slide it back down again, and overall that looks pretty darn good. Now that we already have our camera move set up, we can just duplicate this logarithmic behavior and drag it over so that it covers the entire duration of our second clip. And you can see uh, that it's not working. And it's because of the same thing where the individual layers haven't been rearranged in 3D space yet. They're just stacked right on top of each other. Now the other cool thing with this one that makes it uh, really special compared to the others and something that would be harder to do in Final Cut is we have a foreground layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to close up some of these extra tabs that we don't need to declutter our workspace and we're going to select this foreground layer. Now the very first thing we're going to do since our camera is already moving for us is we're going to come up here from active camera to top and you can see uh, where our camera is, we can see where our clips are and we want to make it so that this foreground clip starts uh, not visible by the camera, but as the camera slides backwards, it reveals these rocks that are stacked in the foreground. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and you can see in the bottom right, we're just going to drag it closer to the camera right up to the point that it's out of frame at the beginning of our clip. Now if we go down and we grab our middle layer, our midground, we're going to drag uh, our model so that she's just sort of in the middle. And then we're going to click on the camera so that we can see where our depth of field is and say, okay, uh, the background just needs to move very slightly backwards. And so we're going to click on that and drag it just backwards. Now, if we highlight the camera, we can just slide back and forth and we can make sure that our clips are falling in between these different focus areas that we've set up so that they come in and out of focus at the right times. Okay, now that we have these positioned in 3D space so that they should behave right, we just need to hop back over to our individual properties for each one and make sure that they're scaled properly. So first things first, let's grab our background, let's scale it up, it needs to get a lot bigger. We want it to be completely filling the screen at the end. You can see it, get, it got cut off a little bit in the top right, so we're just gonna scale and position until we get this right in the middle and filling the screen. 
There we go, that looks pretty good right there. The model's face sticking up above the ridge line. And you can see we've already got something that looks really good. Now if we want, we can select the layer that has the model and we can scale her up a little bit, make her a little bit more of the focal point of our shot and slide her down so that her face is closer to the middle and matches this match cut a little bit better. And that looks pretty great with the foreground, background, and midground all playing nicely together. I'm just gonna grab this foreground and just slide it over a little bit so that it distracts less from our model. And there we go. I think we've got our final effect. If you'd like to see how to reproduce this with drop zones so that you can drop in any layers that you want to make this sort of a reusable effect, you can just go down right below the like button, download that uh, free plugin, open it in motion, and you can pull it apart. And you can see how I've done this exact same behavior uh, just with drop zones. All right, that's it for this one. If you have other effects that you'd like to see, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing some more Sam Colder, Peter McKinnon, Johnny Harris, some MKBHD. They've all got titles and effects that I want to show you how to reproduce. If you have a specific title effect or transition from a YouTuber or maybe even a TV show or a movie and you want to know how to reproduce it, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to make a video showing you how to recreate your favorite effects in motion or Final Cut. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for your support, it means a lot, and we'll catch you next time.